So welcome, welcome everyone to the, uh, the fourth Theranostics World Congress. Uh, I'm Rod Hicks, I'm the uh, convener of the meeting and, and very pleased to welcome you in uh, Melbourne. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Richard Bohm, who has really uh, been behind the, the Theranostics World Congress, uh, can't make it uh, today. He, uh, he sent uh, Michael Hoffman and I a, a photo which I thought was one of his unique uh, colour scales of uh, PET scans, but in fact was his leg. Uh, he has a, a rather bad DVT and, and, and uh, one of the uh, occupational hazards of being a visiting professor in your own department, uh, you get lots of air travel and uh, at risk of developing uh, a deep venous thrombosis. So he's not here. Uh, but he did uh, hand on to me some very important artefacts from these meetings. The first is, I'm not quite sure what it is, it's a ball of some sort. Uh, it's the world, is it? I thought romantically it might be the roots of a Riesling vine from Thuringia uh, in Germany. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps not. And, and these are from the, uh, the second World Congress, I gather, in, in Chandigarh, uh, which uh, are going to be ringing if anyone goes over time on their talks. Uh, so, so they're an uh, important part of the meeting. The third con Congress was in Baltimore, but unfortunately our customs won't allow uh, personal weapons into the country, uh, so we don't have any particular artefacts from, from that meeting. But we do have Rich Wall, who was the convener of that meeting, uh, here uh, with us, and he'll be speaking on uh, Wednesday and was very kindly uh, involved in our pre-Congress symposium yesterday. Uh, we embarked on this uh, meeting with some trepidation. It's a long way to come and Melbourne's a relatively expensive city and we weren't sure whether we'd get uh, many registrants uh, to uh, come from around the world but I'm delighted to say that we've got over 370 registrants for this meeting uh, from 20 different countries around the world which is a spectacular out, uh, output uh, and we've been really uh, generously supported by a number of sponsors and I hope you'll take the time uh, to visit all the trade booths out uh, in, the, in the foyer uh, over the next uh, uh, few days. Uh, I'd particularly like to, to mention our uh, platinum sponsor Siemens Health, in, Health and Ears um, and uh, gold sponsor GE and silver sponsors Ansto and ITM uh, and bronze sponsor Cyclotech who've been really fantastic in supporting uh, this uh, meeting uh, and also uh, Prostate Cancer uh, Foundation of Australia and the Victorian State Government for supporting our, our speakers and uh, I can't mention enough the support that we've had from the Unicorn Foundation who took on the risk of running this meeting and uh, uh, hopefully we'll reward them with a, a fabulous meeting over the next couple of days. Um, uh, we, we have a really fantastic uh, program, I think, some fantastic speakers um, uh, who have uh, been put together by Michael Hoffman and Richard uh, Bohm as the, uh, uh, the, the, the chairs of the scientific committee and I'd like, also like to thank many people in the room who've been involved in uh, grading abstracts and, and offering their time and coming uh, to Australia to give talks. It's, it's really a, a great privilege to have you all here in what I think is an incredibly exciting time for Theranostics. Uh, we're really at the, uh, the cusp of a, of a new era in, uh, in nuclear medicine, I think, and we'll share that with you over the coming days. Uh, although the, the meeting is going to be very exciting, I hope you'll also take the opportunity to visit Melbourne. Uh, it's a fantastic city to live in. Uh, we've been voted the mo world's most livable city six times in a row, including this year, and that's a pretty uh, neat effort. It is a wonderful city to live in. Uh, hopefully you'll find it also a great city to visit. Uh, it's um, uh, quite an old city uh, for Australia. N none of our cities are as old as, as Europe. Uh, it was founded in fact, not from, from Sydney, as most people think, but uh, from uh, what was then called Van Diemen's Land. It's really nice to have Marion de Jong here from, from Holland. Uh, uh, the Dutch uh, uh, named a number of places around Australia, and uh, Tasmania was uh, the, uh, the forerunner. And uh, a, a man by the name of John Batman uh, came up from, from uh, uh, what was Van Diemen's Land, now Tasmania and uh, made a claim for land. He had a treaty with the local Aborigines uh, uh, here, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, which reminds me to uh, pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and any who might be here, uh, uh, in, in uh, honour of the uh, gathering on the land that they, they once uh, uh, owned. 
Uh, this, uh, they came and they, uh, they made a treaty. They, this is one of the few areas in Australia that there was a treaty with the Aboriginal people. Uh, it was subsequently annulled by the, uh, the Governor of New South Wales because he didn't want squatters taking it, uh, over the land. They didn't give the land back to the Aboriginals, they took it for Queen Victoria and they named the colony Victoria. Uh, for a while, uh, this town was called Batmania. And so if you've got kids who like Batman, uh, this would have been a rather cool place to, to be called Batmania. Uh, but um, uh, Governor Burke uh, changed the name to, to Melbourne after the then Prime Minister, uh, uh, William Lamb, who was the Viscount of Melbourne in Derbyshire in England. Uh, it's, uh, a, a very orderly town. Uh, we uh, had the, the luxury of uh, being a, uh, uh, in the Victorian era, which was very enlightened. Uh, they decided that we needed lots of public space, public institutions like public libraries and museums. And if you walk around, you'll find this is a wonderful uh, uh, example of the Victorian city. Uh, it's uh, uh, very important, uh, I think, that you, you, you walk around the streets and you look both down and up. So there's some magnificent um, Victorian and Art Deco and Art Nouveau uh, architecture, particularly along Burke Street, named after Governor Burke, uh, and uh, uh, along Collins Street. And, and if you go to the north end of Collins Street, you get to the, what we call the Paris Inn. You can find all your boutiques up there. So walk around. It's also got some fantastic gardens. Uh, the City Fathers uh, required one uh, acre in every four to be committed to public open space and so we have some wonderful gardens, uh, uh, the botanic gardens, the uh, treasury gardens and uh, exhibition gardens quite here, uh, close to here. So please take the time to walk around and it's a, it's a very good walking city, it's very safe, uh, I think you'll have a great time.